Hi. So we're going to talk today about water and chocolate. <laughs> now I can see you thinking now, he's going to tell us to stop eating chocolate. I promise that I will not give up on chocolate. Water is happiness. Water is, to me, the glue of society. There's lots of things you can see kids interacting with water in such a way. You know, when you dress up, you're two years old, going to a wedding, important that they have their nice shoes on and there's a little puddle of water. What do they do just before the ceremony? <laughs> and they are so happy. So water is part of us, genetically speaking. So obviously we'll ruin the shoes, but that's okay. But how much we know really about water, its source, uh, you know, how it's delivered to you, what happens to it after. So would you believe it that you can actually test people's knowledge of water? And this is something that researchers call water literacy. So there is a series of questions, there's about 40 or 50 of them, that you select uh, 5,000 Australians and you ask them these questions. Where does your water come from? Where does it go once you use it? How much of it is available to you? All of this series of questions which basically we translate into same level of literacy or numeracy for primary school. As you can see from this data presented here, only one out of 10 people passed the test. We're talking about primary level understanding of water. So it varies between states. So 13% in WA, 10% in Victoria, up to 20 in Queensland. So, you know, I would guess that the knowledge around water is about 10 to 20% in the world as well. So this is sort of a reflection of the topic around the world as well. Now, is it a problem? What do you think? But I don't want you to feel guilty because, you know, knowing a little bit more about water, or somehow people refer to me sometimes as a water nerd, or knowing as much about water as me, doesn't really get you to the right solution. It's not all that important. Maybe you will become aware more about water, but I'm not sure that you will be necessarily thinking about the biggest issues. So I want to broaden this conversation a little bit more beyond just the ac access to drinking water, beyond just the answer that we did get in the survey. So here's a fact that there is this much water. It's a big number. It's 1.4 billion cubic kilometers of water. You can't get your head around. Don't think about it too much. It's a big number. You may hear, we're running out of water. The sky is falling. <laughs> it's not true, actually, because that's the same number. You see it up there? That we had since the start of time. That's the number that we have today. That's the number that we have in the future. What's the catch? The catch is that 97% of those little drops are in ocean, right? So we have access to three little dots. So 1% falls in the wrong time, 1% falls in the wrong place, and we are left with one little percent, one drop, of which Canada owns 20%. <laughs> Any Canadians here? Hi. I'm Canadian too. All right, so that's, that's the complication there. But that's not really the point. The point is, what do we do with this water? The fact that really confronted me is that of that little percent that, you know, we take out the 20% that Canada owns, we're left with that much for the whole world. We use pretty much all of it on producing food. Food is important. But lots of people think that your use of water is taking less shower, you know, longer showers, shorter showers, that, that's fine. But it's not, we're talking about the big numbers here. The big numbers are food production. That's really a big number, 70%. These are just estimates, you know, it could be a bit more, a bit less, all of that. But we need our food, I mean, food is essential. So, I think we should 
turn the problem around, and instead of asking you how much water you drank or how much water you drink, I'm sure that people are thinking about the two, two and a half liters or five liters that recommended, that's for intake as liquid. But most of the water that you intake is actually true food. But beyond that, I want you to think about the fact that every day you consume about 3,500 liters of water. Every one of you. How could that be possible? Because every item on our dinner plate or breakfast plate has what we call a water footprint signature. So you can see here examples. So you see beef, for example, is 15,000 liters. A kilo of apple is about 800 liters. And there's a whole range of numbers. So you can see me coming here. You can actually control kind of your water footprint by choosing the food that you like or you don't like. So sugar, one of our favorite thing there is 1,700 liters. But here is the big one. I know. Everywhere I go, people go like, oh, it's beef, isn't it? I go like, no. It's chocolate. 24,000 liters of water for a kilo of chocolate. And that's just an average again, because there are some places where it's actually 30,000. And you know chocolate is made out of two components. So one component is very water intensive, the butter, and the, the other component is uh, less water intensive. When you pull them all together, it comes to this number. There are websites that you can go in and you know, dial and you can look at your number and you put whatever you eat and you can actually come up with a water food signature. The other big shock to me was of all of this, all this water that we use to produce food, we actually waste one third. It's actually 1.3 billion tons of food that goes to waste. And these are just some examples. I want you to focus on the numbers at the top. 45% of vegetables and things like that, 45% of other kinds of food, 20% of meat. That's an equivalent for vegetables of 1.7 trillion apple that we just discard. These are the big numbers. So here we are. Let me just sum it up for you. We have not much water. We use lots of it on food and we waste half of it. So, in fact, the water that you eat is that big signature there. But in fact, I lie to you, not all of you eat all that much water. In fact, some of you eat more than others. And I believe that it's all going to be solved at the dinner plate, because that's the thing that you can influence. What to put on your dinner plate is really the thing that's going to influence this big problem that we have around waste and around water. So you can choose, like me, on certain day to have this kind of dinner. So if your dinner is made out of 100% chocolate and my preference is 85% dark, then your footprint, obviously, is a big one. And then you can be the average, you can, you know, play with different kind of vegetables or whatever, and you can basically, that plate at the bottom is yours, you can do with it what you want. And that's really the whole idea here, is what can we do uh, individually and together to actually solve this biggest problem. It's not about uh, you know, technology, because I can tell you, we know about technology so much that we can make water from anywhere. The whole problem is around the costs, right? So eventually there will be technology in the future that will make water very accessible. But that's not the point. The point is that you have that food, you, ha you look at it and you treat it with love, you don't waste it, then you will be solving one of humanity's biggest problems. Thank you.